This shouldn't be surprising, but it still continually surprises me that nature doesn't give up. If you create the circumstances for nature to move in at whatever scale, it absolutely will. The um, A couple of weeks ago, I was, in the, I was looking for a present for Billy, my, my brother, and he loves panties. And there was this like row after row after row of peonies all down the side of this greenhouse and 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 they weren't blooming yet but there was one like way down at the end of the aisle that had a bloom stalk but it was yellow and I thought there are no yellow peonies so I walked down there and it happened to have been clearly it was the only pot in the entire nursery that where the soil had not been treated with a pre-emergent poison that keeps weed seeds from germinating and um, and a butter a stalk of butterweed had come up right from the middle of the peony, and then underneath the peony leaves were was a l nice little stand of American speedwell, which is a really pretty little uh, American wildflower, and and it was just this astonishing reminder. And it's like, how many of these reminders have I had in my life? But every time, it's like, whoa, we just have to get out of the way. They pay attention to each other. They are constantly studying one another. And I think that so much of that, it's competition, no doubt, but it's also cooperation. If an owl uh, appears in the yard or a cooper's hawk, all the other creatures are gonna mob that. It's actually called a songbird mob. They're gonna cooperate together, these, tiny, these smaller birds, with, um, with the bigger birds to try to drive that predator out of the yard. They do the same thing if a snake is on the move. They work together when it's necessary. I love fall. I, I just love fall because it's such a season of change and such a season of preparation. You see that everything knows that the, that things are changing and they are preparing. The, the hummingbirds are fattening up for their migration and so are the many of the songbirds. And the squirrels and the chipmunks are gathering, you know, all the, the bounty of fall, the berries and the nuts and hiding them. And then the blue jays are coming along and stealing the things that the squirrels have hidden. It is just a fun, lively, exciting time and the light is so splendid. I wanted it to work as a kind of, uh, a, a, almost like a devotional, something that you read slowly, one piece at a time. And of course, all those early breveries, um, the, the books of hours from the early church but I was careful with Billy because he's an artist. They, they, these are works of art. I don't think of them as illustrations. I didn't say, you have to do this. Here's my vision for this. I stayed completely out of it unless he asked a question. And often the question was really just, can I use this butterfly? Can I use this bird? Because the one, the one, the one sort of rule I gave him is that it has to be a, a plant or an insect or an animal that is native to the American South. But I wanted it to be the wildflowers and the birds and the reptiles and the amphibians that that we grew up with, the ones that we love. And other than that, it was, we think of this work as being in conversation with one another. My words and his images, they're talking to one another. memory for me the memory works it's often um, unexpected triggers and that can be a snatch of a song that you hear across um, a department store or it can be um, a particular slant of light like we were talking about that earlier that autumn slant of light I think that makes me think of elementary school classrooms all the time because dust motes in the air remind me of that chalk dust 
in the air. And so I think that all the seasons have those memories that they can help you access. Well, my, my answer to that question is always start by taking your earbuds out. <laughs> it's always basically just pay attention. Mm -hmm. Because I think when you, it's so easy, we're so busy, people are just trying to get food on the table and kids out the door in the morning and the rent paid, it's hard to pay attention. But sometimes we just need to be quiet and still and listen. And I think when you do that, when you pay attention, there's nobody who doesn't fall in love who's paying attention to this world.